Hilchos Kiddush HaChodesh, Perek Shloisha Asar, The Laws of Sanctifying the New Month, Chapter 13. So, today's chapter is a direct continuation to yesterday's chapter. Let's review the two things that we learned yesterday. Or maybe let's call it three things. Number one, the sun has an orbit that goes around the earth. The earth is off-center to it. You can see the center is the orange circle. The earth is off-center. But nevertheless, relative to itself, the sun is making progress on this orange orbit every single day of about one degree. It's pretty steady. It actually is steady. The Ramam says the, the, the motion on its own orbit is steady. 59 minutes and about 8 seconds, it's just under a degree. Okay? That is going to have to be adjusted for the viewer on Earth. Because as you can see in this picture, this is like a great example of it. The sun, on its orbit, if you start from zero degrees, is at 90 degrees right now. But you would only see the sun at 90 if you were standing on the orange circle. The yellow line that's drawn from the orange circle to the sun sees the sun at 90 degrees. But if you're on Earth and you draw a line straight from you to the sun at the point of 90 degrees, but where is it going to meet on the ecliptic, on the belt of the stars against which we identify the movement of the sun? Where is it going to be? Much behind, about 80 degrees. So this, in order to identify the true position of the sun, the Ramam is going to give us today a table of adjustments. And it's not going to be, he's not going to reveal the mathematical tricks behind this. If you know trigonometry or geometry, it's super simple. But he, he's, he's just going to give us the final result. He's just going to tell you, when the sun is at 90 degrees on the orbit, this is going to be the adjustment. When this, this is going to be, and you'll just have to trust him on it. Now, there's one more piece to the puzzle, and that is what's called the gova, the apogee. Because what determines this, this table of adjustments? What determines how far or how different the sun will be seen on this belt based on this? It depends how far the sun got from what's called the gova, the apogee. Depending on how far the sun is from the highest point of its orbit will define how you need to adjust it. So if the apogee stayed in place, if this was always the highest point, so it would be super easy. We just say, where is the sun? Tell me where the sun is. Boom, I got the adjustment. But the Rambam revealed to us yesterday that this apogee, this high point, is actually moving. In the beginning of creation, yes, it was at zero degrees. And by the Rambam's time, the highest point had actually moved, and here's a picture we showed it yesterday. The high point is now at 60 degrees. See, we still count zero here because the beginning of Aries is always 60. It's always zero. But the Gova, the highest point of the sun, was now here. And so the adjustment that would have worked in the other picture for 90 degrees is going to be much less now because 90 degrees is really to be treated like 30 degrees because it's 30 degrees away from the apogee. So really, in order to properly do this table of adjustments, we always need to know where is the high point, where is the apogee, and we need to know how far is the sun relative to the apogee. And once we know how far the sun is relative to the apogee, now we can make the table of adjustments. And that's, that's the chapter today. Okay? Let's see how the Ramam describes it. Halacha Aleph. If you desire to know the true position of the sun any day that you want, and again, true position means where is the sun relative to the observer on earth? So if you want to know the true position, here's what you have to do first. You must first figure out where is its average position. In other words, where is it on the orange circle? Where is it on its own orbit that day? You also must ascertain where is the apogee. In the Rambam's case, the apogee would be about here. It's actually a little further, about 86 degrees in the Rambam's times. And today it's even further because every 70 years it moves about one degree. So you must figure out where is the apogee. Here the Rambam is speaking in a little bit of code. Subtract the position of the apogee from the position of the sun. The Hanishar the remainder is called the pathway or the course of the sun. In other words, let's just use this picture as an example. It's a great example. The apogee is at 60 degrees. The sun is at 90 degrees. You would subtract the apogee from the sun. 90 minus 60 is how much? 30. 30 is the maslul hashemesh. 30 is the distance that the sun has traveled from its apogee. So by ascertaining where the apogee is, and then where the sun is, and subtracting the number of the apogee from the number of the sun, you basically figure out what we call today the angular distance between the sun and its apogee. And then I can give you the table of adjustments. 
V'tira kama mailis hu masal Hashem mashalach abeis. Check how many degrees is this course. And the picture we have here, it's, it's pretty little. It's just 30 degrees. But imagine if the apogee would be here and the sun would be here by 240. The Maslul Hashemesh, the pathway, the angular distance of the sun from its apogee would be quite a lot. So figure out how many degrees it is. Im haya hamaslul pachais mimeo shmeinim mailis. If the distance between the apogee and the sun is less than 180 degrees, tigra menas hamaslul mimekayim hashemesh oemtsoi, you will then subtract Menas means the angle, but we're going to translate it as the adjustment. The adjustment of the course, you're going to de- subtract the adjustment from the, from the average position of the sun. But if the angular distance was between 180 and 360, so you're going to add the angular adjustment to the position of the sun. And I showed this to you yesterday. The reason for this difference is very simple. Let's take a look at the picture here. Between 0 and 180 degrees, as the sun progresses on its own orbit, from the position on Earth, you will always see it as behind that number. Here it's at 90 degrees. From Earth, you're going to see it as 80 degrees. From anywhere from 0 to 180, your, your perspective will always be behind. So whatever adjustment the Rambam gives, we're going to have to subtract. From 90, we're going to subtract 10, and we're going to get to 80. But once you go to the other side, look what happens over here. Between 180 and 360, this is an example of 270 I picked. From the perspective on Earth, because the, the uh, orientation is going the other way, now, if from the middle of the sun's orbit it looks like a 270, on Earth you're going to see it ahead of 270, about 285. And therefore, from 180 to 360, you're going to have to add the adjustment. So the Raman will give you the adjustments, and he tells you, between 0 and 180, subtract the adjustment. Between 180 and 360, Add the adjustment. And of course, the Ramam concludes, Whatever the number of degrees is, after you add or subtract the adjustment, that is the true position of the sun. Gimel vida, and you should know, If the angular distance between the sun and its apogee is exactly 180 degrees, or exactly 360, we'll call that zero degrees, ain loimana, of course, there is no angular adjustment. The average placement is the true placement. And you can see that over here. It's a little bit off, but I'll just show you. Right? When it's at zero degrees, if you're looking from the center of the sun's orbit or you're looking from the earth, the line will cross in the identical spot at zero degrees. And the same will happen. The line will cross identically at 180. It's only between zero and 180 where these differences of the lines will apply. But if you're at zero or at 180, there is no angular adjustment. The average position is the true position. So now that Amman will give us the table of adjustments. What is the angular distance of the course? In other words, what is the adjustment that has to be made for the distance between the sun and its apogee? And the Ramam just literally, as I said, goes through the table, doesn't give you the math behind it, just trust him. If the progress that the sun has made from its apogee is 10 degrees, the angular adjustment will be 20 minutes. That's a third of a degree. And you have to, again, subtract that, because that means that from, a, from, a, from the viewer on Earth, you're going to see the sun 20 seconds behind where the sun actually is on its course. Again, as the sun travels further, the angular distance gets bigger. 20 degrees of progress will be 40 minutes of adjustment. 30 degrees of progress. It's 58 minutes now, almost a full degree of adjustment. If it's 40 degrees of uh, progress, the angular adjustment will be 1 degree and 15 minutes. For a 50 degree progress, the angular adjustment will be 1 degree and 29 minutes. For 60 degrees of progress, the angular adjustment will be 1 degree and 41 minutes. For 70 degrees of progress, it's 1 degree and 51 minutes. For 80 degrees of progress, it'll be 1 degree and 57 minutes. The maximum angular distance will be at 90 degrees, where the angular adjustment will be a full degree and 59 minutes, almost two full degrees. So, of course, you can see that in this picture it's very exaggerated, because the picture we're using says that at 90 degrees, we're going to view it at 80 degrees. That's not true. The difference is not so vast. 
it's only a difference of two degrees. But the point, this picture is just there to make the point of this, of this difference. And so here you can see from 10 to 90, it gets bigger. And now watch, from 90 to 180, it's going to get smaller. The slide's not working here, so I'm just going to leave this slide up. If it's 100 degrees of progress, right? it goes down. One degree and 58 minutes. 110 degrees of progress is one degree and 53 minutes of adjustment. 120 degrees of progress is one degree and 45 minutes of adjustment. 130 degrees of progress is one degree and 33 minutes of, the of adjustment. At 140, it's one degree and 19 minutes. At 150 degrees of progress, it's just one degree and one second and one minute. Once you hit 160, we're even lower than a degree. It's just 42 minutes of adjustment. At 170, the angular adjustment will be just 21 minutes. And again, if it's 80, 180 degrees exactly, there is no angular adjustment as we explained. The, true, the average position is the true position. Now, if you know just a little simple math, on the second half of the circle, the angular adjustments are going to reflect their counterpart. There's no need to rewrite the entire table. If 10 degrees this way was an adjustment of x, and the Ramam said 10 degrees was 20 chalakim, then 10 degrees this way at 350 is going to be the same 20 degrees of adjustment. So what the Ramam is going to say, here's the way he codes it, he says like this, If the course, in other words, the distance from the sun to its apogee, is more than 180 degrees, simply subtract that number from 360, that'll give you the opposite way of the circle, and you'll know the adjustment. Keitzah, what does that look like? If the adjustment was 200, if the distance was 200 degrees, simply subtract it from 360, it's 160 left. The same way, 160 this way, says the Rambam. We've already let you know. But the angular adjustment for 160 degrees of progress is 42 chalakim, so 200 is really 160 from this side. So it's the same thing. So to the angular adjustment for 200 degrees will be 42 minutes of a degree. Vav, if it was 300 degrees, for example, just another example to bring, illustrating the same point. Subtract it from 360. 60 is left. You already know, as per the table, 60 degrees of distance this way needs a 1 degree and 41 minute adjustment. So 300 degrees, which is right over here, 60 as well, equally distant from the apogee, needs the same adjustment, is, uh, you know, 1 degree and 41 minutes. And the same thing applies to every single number. Now, this whole table only works by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40. What if you discover that the angular distance is 12 or 42? What do you do now? The Raman doesn't have a table for you, so you're stuck. Okay, so here you have to use your head a little bit. Let's say the angular distance was 63, uh, 65 degrees. So you look at the table, you have the adjustment for 60, and you have the adjustment for 70. So simply divide it in half. The angular adjustment for 60 degrees of progress is 1 degree 41 minutes. And the 70 degree progress adjustment is 1 degree and 51 uh, minutes. So between the two adjustments is 10 minutes. Based on the, the math, the calculation of the degrees, per degree of progress, you get one minute of adjustment. And so therefore, for a progress of 65 degrees, the angular adjustment will be just halfway, one degree and 46 degrees and 46 minutes. Well, I think it's called Interpolation. Thank you for the correct term. Yeah, you're right. Interpolation. You interpolate, if you have the two ends, all you have to do is interpolate the middle. So in the example that Ambam chose, it's easy because between the two adjustments are exactly 10, 10 minutes. But it's the same thing. If the 
if the course traveled was 67 degrees of progress, the angular adjustment will be 1 degree and 48, because between 60 and 70 is exactly 10 minutes, as you can see over there. So per degree, it's 1 minute. The same you should do for every type of course, every type of distance traveled, where the number will be 1s with the 10s. It's not exactly 40, it's not exactly 50, etc., this principle is going to be true both when it comes to the sun and when it comes to the moon. It's a, it's a basic mathematical principle that Amam just spells it out, that I'm going to give you tables of 10, and when you have single units, just simply interpolate, as David gave us the correct terminology, simply interpolate the missing number. And now, as the Ramam always does, a visualization to his time and place. And as we saw the other day, this is the Ramam's starting point, the Shnas Ikar. He talks about the eve of 3rd Nisan, 4938, March 22, 1178. And he's going to give us the true position of the sun for 100 days later, the 14th of Tammuz. It says that, What does this all look like practically? If we desire to know the true position of the sun at the beginning of the night of Shabbos, Friday night, 14 days into the month of Tammuz of this year, 4938, First, you must figure out where is the sun on its orbit. Well, we figured that out yesterday. The sign is 105 degrees, 37 minutes, 28 seconds, as we've explained. Let's also calculate the position of the apogee of the sun for this time. We already did that yesterday as well. The, the sign comes out, 86 degrees, 45 minutes, 23 seconds. Subtract the position of the apogee from the position of the sun, 105 minus 86, and change of the minutes and seconds. Yetzel Maslo will trust the Rambam on this. The distance between the sun and its apogee will come out to be 18 degrees, 52 minutes, 2 seconds. Says the Rambam, do not be considerate, do not be particular about the single units between degrees, the chalakim, the minutes. If they're less than 30, al tifna and don't consider them. If they were 30 or more, we're going to consider them to be one degree and add them to the number of degrees in the distance traveled between the sun and its apogee. Lefichach, therefore, in this case, where we have 18 degrees and 52 minutes, it's pretty close to 60. Lefichach, yi emas lo ze, cha asre maylas. We're going to call this 19 degrees. Veti emanase, ala derech shebiarnu, shmoi no shleishim chalakim. Based on the table which I gave you before, the angular adjustment over here will be 38 minutes. Let's do it ourselves. We have the distance for 10 degrees is 20 minutes. For 20 degrees of progress is 40 minutes. That means between each degree, between 10 and 20, you have to add what? Two minutes of difference. So for 19 degrees, you just go, you just go 40 minus 2, which is 38, 38 minutes. Yud. Since the angular distance here was less than 180, it was just 19 degrees, Tigra Hamana. In this case, we subtract the angular adjustment. 38 minutes, we subtract that from the average position of the sun. Yishoyer, so in place of what used to be 105, 37, 28, now we're left with the 104 degrees, 59 minutes and 25 seconds, 104, 59, 25, and thus, so it turns out that where was the true position of the sun? At the beginning of this Friday night, was Bemazel Sartan, in the constellation of Cancer, instead of 16 degrees, now it's 15, it's been backed up. 15 degrees, less 35 seconds, so just at the end of the 15th degree. And again, we don't bother with the seconds over here. Not when it comes to ascertaining the position of the sun, or the position of the moon, or any other calculations involved with sighting the moon. You should only look at, zoom into the minutes, those make a difference, 30 or less, 30 or more. If the seconds were close to 30, and here the commentaries say, can't mean close, because if it's under 30, you, don't, you ignore it. Close means approximately, 30 or more. 
If it's 30 or more, Asayo Yisam Chilek Echad V'Hisifa Al Achalakim, simply convert it into one minute and add it to the, um, to the minutes. Yud Alev, Omei Achar Sheteida Mekayim Hashem Meshbechol Eish Shetirtzeh, once you know where the true position of the sun is at any moment that you want, Teida Yoyim HaTkufa HaAmiti called Tkufa Shetirtzeh. You can now also ascertain the true Tkufa, that which we discussed in chapter 9 and 10. The beginning of each season, as the sun reaches a quarter of its orbit, the real quarter will be determined by when we actually see the sun at zero degrees or at 90 degrees, which can only be ascertained once you know the true position of the sun. Whether future seasons, equinoxes, solstices that come after the starting point from which we began, or past past equinoxes, past solstices from years that are before, again, because you know the true position of the sun, so you can know where the true beginning of the seasons are as well.